I love the way that plants can make you feel. You have such a range of emotions from calm to just excited because there's a new leaf growing or a flower coming up. But also just, you know, seeing the process of the plant from being a seed to a seedling to then something harvestable and then having it all die down and then composting and returning it to the earth. I think that's such a beautiful process. My name is Tammy Huynh. I'm a horticulturist. I'm a garden writer. I'm an educator, a plant lover, a garden lover, all things to do with plants. I live in Cabramatta and that's in southwest Sydney. I've pretty much been here for most of my life. So I come from a, quite a big family. So there's mum and dad, and then there's five of us. So I'm not quite the middle child, but um, yeah, so second eldest. My parents came from, or escaped the Vietnam War, and they wanted the best for us. This garden was started by my grandma. She always grew her own things. That's what they did back in Vietnam, grew to sell to obviously sustain the family. I, you know, very close to her um, as I was growing up, because she sort of looked after us while my parents went to work. She grew everything from, you know, just lettuce to, to beans to everything that you could possibly eat, really. And when she passed about five or six years ago now, then that's when my parents sort of really took over. And it kind of worked out that they were sort of heading into semi-retirement. He's OK? Yeah. yeah. So I think they've really, you know, taken it to you know, where Grandma had it. I think there's some capsicum and oh, some yeah. chilli. Oh, yeah. okay. And I'll put some chilli in too. Oh, yeah. Mum's a very... Uh, Let's just dig a hole and put it in there and see what happens. A kind of gardener. And I think it's worked. I mean, everything's growing really well. Ne jongi go gardener, ne jongi me. Um, I mean, hai Asian ma, so but the food hai Asian go di tu jongi lo. Mui yeng tu jong ti lo. Yeah, she loves all the different things. I guess <laughs> seasonality and being able to grow things that she did grow back home. Ne jong hao chi di mo. Yeah, she does. She loves the heat in the cooking. Um, so yeah, definitely love planting chilies. It's a north-facing garden, which is great. Everything grows really well, but there's nothing on either side of the east and west boundaries, so we get the full brunt of the sun. We've got a lot of productive areas, lots of fruits and veggies growing, um, lime, lots of different herbs. Garlic chives are one of my favourites, so we've always got them perennial growing. But yeah, it's a real sort of eclectic mix of things. Even in the productive patch, we've got some ornamental things sort of just hanging about just because we didn't know where else to put them. And then through here, come and have a look at this dragon fruit. So it's growing on a structure here because it's a climbing cactus, so it does need to climb and it does need a structure to then grow and spread. It doesn't look particularly attractive and if you get too close, the thorns will scratch you. I've done that many times. But we do have some flowers that have died there and the fruit is forming. So we've got a couple of little ones growing there. And then we've also got little chicks, or chooks, I should say. One sort of scratching around over there, and the couple are sort of roaming around. There is lots of taro growing in the garden, and Mum loves to use it in her cooking, so in soups, and also she loves to pickle it as well. So what she's saying is that you have to wait for the, the stems to fall away from the main clump, then they're a bit more flexible, so then you know they're ready to harvest, and you just cut it off at ground level then she'll pickle it. So she um, strips all the, the leaf sheaths back and then she'll, you put it in salt and then in a bucket to just let it pickle away for how long? Uh, for four weeks. For about four weeks. Typically, mum then uses it in stir fries. This one? It's a bit sour, the taste, um, but she cooks it with oyster sauce, so there's a little bit of sweetness too, so sweet and sour. So part of the decision to study horticulture was because my parents kind of randomly decided that they were going to buy a piece of land and plant bamboo. They wanted to harvest edible bamboo shoots and then supply them to the city markets. So that's what really got me into it. I mean, I love gardening, but I didn't know I could, you know, actually study it and, and do something with it. The bamboo farm is in Peach Ridge. It's north of Sydney. There's lots of hectares of bamboo. I don't know how many, but there's lots. So I helped my parents plant out the bamboo, or all my family did, that we spent here many long weekends there. And then eventually I decided to write about it for my honours thesis. What I personally love about bamboo is just 
the sheer size they get to because it grows so tall, but everyone sort of assumes it's probably a tree, but it's actually a grass. It's one of the fastest growing grasses in the world. So we grow a couple of edible bamboo shoots here. This is Dendrocalamus latiflorus. It's also known as sweet bamboo, and I think it's because the, the shoots are quite sweet when they're eaten. It grows quite tall. It's up to about 25 metres. This clump here is probably well over 10 years old. Definitely not for the small garden. So if you have a large one, yes, definitely go for it. The Dendrocalamus asper um, is a bit darker in colour, a bit more brown with a green tinge. It's also known as a giant bamboo just because of the size it gets to. So the most identifying feature are these velvet-like hairs on the culms or the stems of the bamboo. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, we've then got the bamboo shoots and that's what's edible. So to prepare this, you need to remove all the leaf sheets. Let's see if I can do that for you now. And then that gives you the bamboo shoot. You would need to boil it first before you eat it. It has a bit of bitterness to it. And once you do boil it, then you can add it to your soups and stir fries. is what sort of got me into horticulture, but it hasn't made me stay there. So I've seen the beauty and, and so much more that I can do with plants. So that's why I haven't necessarily gone back to the bamboo yet, but I may. There's just so much, so much variety in horticulture. So at home, I do have a little dedicated space where I can just experiment with plants. So this is my little ornamental alley. It's where I spend a lot of my time tinkering, experimenting and just being, because it's such a lovely place to be. It's out of the sun. It's, you know, just a small area that's sort of been fashioned out of old steel posts. We've got chicken wire, we've got real estate signs, we've got, you know, random just sheeting. But it works for the purpose and it just allows me to sort of do my thing away from everyone else. And yeah, it's my, my happy space. So I wanted to share with you this plant here. It's a Schefflera. I really like it just because of how the leaves are arranged, just like your typical Schefflera. It sort of comes out like a um, little umbrella, I guess. The leaves are a lot more jagged or toothed, so it just looks really cool. So this is one of another one of my favourite plants. It's the Anthurium vichii. It is a tropical plant, so it hasn't grown as well as it really should have. The leaves can grow up to almost a metre long, but you can still see that it's still growing well. Just the leaves. Like, they're just so beautiful to look at. They kind of remind me a bit of abs, <laughs> just because of the rib texture. I think it adds a lovely textural contrast. Uh, so I've got quite a few variegated plants. So what can happen with variegated plants is that they can revert back to green, the solid green leaf. What you can do to help encourage more variegation is to actually cut it back to where the variegation is more prominent. And provided you do have a node, you can actually continue to propagate that. But I just put in a glass of water and roots will form and it will grow again. So I do a lot of teaching online and also in local garden centres. I meet many people at workshops who haven't grown anything at all, but they want to, but they just don't know where to start. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's uh, the nature of gardening. If oh, your hands right. or the table wasn't dirty, I'd be concerned. Is there a market <laughs> for the garden? <laughs> this is sweet. You've got a broom. broom. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing people have that light bulb moment when they learn that they can look after a plant. So that's an interesting one. It is a jungle cactus, because most of the time people come and they're not sure what to do or they've killed many plants. So being able to share how to grow plants and then see that they can um, is what I really hope people can walk away with, that knowledge to grow and make sure it's got a brightly lit spot. And okay, it will grow you. really well for you. Oh, nice, thank you. <laughs>